Welcome to Research Evaluation and Evidence Generation in Population Health. This is Lecture C. The objectives for this lecture are discuss HIT needs for proposed interventions and extend current trends in population health research into the future given new capabilities that are emerging. Let's review. What is HIT? Well, it's an enormously diverse amount of technologies. In fact, health information technology. Many consumers will be aware using wearable devices such as Fitbits and fuel bands. They'll have health IT on their phones. They'll be looking for health information on the Internet. We often think about health information technology being important to providers. But payers and insurers also use health information technology to facilitate the collection of insurance and other benefits. A few applications that may be relevant to those engaged in population health endeavors are patient registries. These are often disease-specific or treatment-specific. For example, for disease-specific registries, there are diabetes and cancer registries. For intervention-specific, we have documents of vaccines. Accounting and practice management systems, these overlay many hospital or medical groups. These practice management systems, to name a few functions, staff the nurses, make sure that they're on time, perform payroll tasks, and schedule patients. Practice management systems can vary widely in their own right. Physicians will often use something called Computerized Physician Order Entry, CPOE. Here is where the physician will put in the instructions to other clinicians on how to tend to patients. E-prescribing is how you get your medications. Again, a lot of this takes place in something called an Electronic Medical Record, or EMR. The consumer will access the EMR through something called the Patient Portal, or Patient Health Record. What are some more components of health information technology? As outputs, you will see results reporting. You may get a lab result back. You may go to some place like LabCorp and have a blood draw. You may get an email that will tell you things such as your cholesterol level or some other lab report in which you're interested. That may also go directly to your physician. That may also go directly to your physician and be entered into your electronic medical record as a form of electronic documentation. More HIT includes appointment scheduling and patient kiosks. Telemedicine has been with us for many years now, but it's growing rapidly. The day will come when we can simply turn on our smartphone and consult face-to-face -face with our physician. That'll be wonderful. A larger part of the various HIT components occurs at the regional or state level. These are health information exchanges or regional health information organizations. The hope is that whatever provider you see will have access to your medical record. This will save money on the creation of new information. In other words, you don't want every doctor you see to order unnecessary lab tests. With health information exchanges, you can share information and also keep it secure. HIT is necessary because healthcare is fragmented. There are many providers operating in many types of sites, whether it is a hospital, medical group, something we call the, quote, doc in a box, end quote, which may be a physician site located in a strip mall or some other unusual setting. We even see doctors' offices in commercial outlets such as Walmart and Sears. So it's really quite fragmented. That's why HIT is important. We hope to connect those various parts in a unified way so that you, the customer, gets a holistic treatment. And what is the ultimate goal? It is the triple aim, improving the quality of health, reducing the cost of health overall, and ensuring that healthcare is more integrated. It's not only collecting data. Hopefully, it's used to manage your care. There are many priorities that are being framed more and more frequently in population terms. It's important to distinguish between population and public. Public is usually a large swath of our community.
and it may not differentiate those people in a meaningful way. For example, looking at African American communities, which occasionally have different issues than other communities for a variety of reasons. Another example, looking at women only, because of a particular health issue. Looking at a population of students. Looking at a population in a workplace. And that's why the population question is becoming more and more important. The Affordable Care Act is actually influencing what types of services are delivered in what setting. Are disparities really being reduced? Both healthcare and population health services need to be functioning properly in order for our community to get a holistic set of care. What are the research implications of this? The Affordable Care Act has had a significant influence on this when it was legislated quite explicitly that more comparative effectiveness research, CER, is needed. In research design, these would be your classic multiple intervention studies. So how does the Affordable Care Act actually define comparative effectiveness research? Quote, Research evaluating and comparing health outcomes and the clinical effectiveness, risks, and benefits of two or more medical treatments, services, and items. End quote. In other words, this is where we really want to see that if you're trying to improve the diet of a particular population, in this specific case, we said medical treatments, that multiple interventions are actually being examined. The medical treatments, services, and items of CER are much broader than just pure treatments. We can define them as healthcare interventions, protocols, treatment care management, delivery procedures, diagnostics, devices, and on and on. You can see their full description on this slide. A defining characteristic of comparativeness effectiveness research is that it should also have population-based objectives that can be expressed in policy terms. This should be important to the consumers. You'll see many of these programs explicitly include consumer audiences as part of their management boards. The methods and data sources should match the research question. If you think you need a research designer or a statistician, you probably do. If you're asking the question, the answer is yes, and it's better to get them on board sooner rather than later. Lastly, people really want these conducted in real-world settings. More and more, the patient and the population is becoming the center of outcomes research. This actually goes by a very specific name, PCOR, Patient-Centered Outcomes Research. Here you can see some of the characteristics around PCOR and how the patient-focused questions might be framed. Examples include, given my personal characteristics, conditions, and preferences, what should I expect will happen to me? And what are my options? And what are the benefits and harms of those options? These questions are written in a similar format of a quality goal. The Affordable Care Act and later legislation actually created an institute for PCOR, the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, or PCORI, has research priorities. This institute is leading this trend in many ways, and it's worth going to their website if you have the opportunity. They also have very good resources for those of us engaged in population health interventions. Here are a few of the topics that interest PCORI including assessment of prevention, diagnosis, and treatment options, improving healthcare systems, and accelerating patient-centered outcomes and methodological research. Let's review what we've learned in this lecture. We've defined HIT and its components, including applications and process, discussing the necessity of HIT to unify the various parts of healthcare. We've learned about some of the goals of HIT, specifically the triple aim. And we've also discussed population health priorities and some of the research implications that will extend current trends toward the future. Specifically, we learned more about comparative effectiveness research 
and patient-centered outcomes research. This concludes our unit on research evaluation and evidence generation in population health. In summary, we've discussed the processes of research and evaluation in population health in order to assess the value and effects that specific population-based interventions create. We've discussed the importance of community engagement, effective research design, and evaluation. We spent some time discussing literature reviews, including search strategies and focus. And lastly, we discussed the necessity and goals of health information technology and population health research.